The residents of Norwood Park, Illinois, witnessed one of the most horrific crime sprees of the century. A man who portrayed himself as a faithful husband, devoted father, and model citizen would alter the landscape of a town forever. People knew John Wayne Gacy as a successful building contractor who spent his free time dressed as Pogo the Clown or Hatches the Clown at charitable events and children's hospitals. While he looked and acted trustworthy, Gacy was using their trust as an advantage to almost get away with 33 murders between 1972 and 1978. A man who had a second life with a disturbing addiction for sexually abusing and murdering teenage boys. Gacy claimed to be a loving father who was vocally against hitting a child. What the public did not know is that he had a secret life of luring boys and young men to his home. Then he would perform his domination and bondage rituals, including handcuffs, strangulation, and sexual acts. After luring the boys to his house, through lies or at gunpoint, Gacy would then give them alcohol and trick them into putting on handcuffs, occasionally as part of his clown routine. Then, once they were defenseless, he would torment his teenage victims before raping them and finishing off with what he called the rope trick, strangling the boys with a length of rope. John Wayne Gacy managed to get away with his murders because he was the epitome of a model citizen. He was a married father, aspiring politician in Wisconsin. He was a Democratic precinct captain before moving to Norwood Park outside of Chicago, where he ran a contracting company. Gacy used homophobia to his advantage. Many of his victims were runaways, boys from broken families whose disappearance would go unnoticed. Some were homosexual, which was a taboo at the time. Homosexuals were hesitant to report any sexual assaults. In the 70s, homosexuality was looked at as an unacceptable lifestyle, leaving protection from the police non-existent. On December 19, 1978, the disappearance of a 15-year-old boy led the police to the arrest and conviction of the now-known killer clown, linking Gacy to the substantial number of murders he notched on his belt. One day, the boy told his mother he was meeting a man regarding a construction job. Days later, after the teenager's reported disappearance, police spoke with the young boy's mother. She informed them he was meeting with a man who turned out to be Gacy. Police made a visit to Gacy, who denied he ever met the boy. The police then visited the local pharmacy, where the teen was employed to discover that they did in fact meet. They immediately requested a search warrant when they discovered he was convicted of a felony 10 years prior. After collecting evidence from the Gacy house linking him to the missing boy, the police obtained a second warrant to explore the crawl space. And that is where the horror began. And I crawled to the east and then to the south. They found human bones buried in the mud. Gacy was arrested and eventually admitted his crimes to the authorities. In one of his interrogations, Gacy shocked the officers when he told them that he liked being a clown because clowns can get away with murder. Clowns can get away with anything. Clowns can get away with murder. He drew out a map of where the bodies were in his house, but would not reveal the names of the deceased. The map was precise, showing the location of the decayed bodies of his prey. Police were already in their process to excavate the house. The crews were ordered to break down the foundation of the house to gain more evidence to solidify their investigation. All but five of Gacy's victims were discovered and identified. They discovered 22 of the casualties underneath his house, buried in his crawl space. The remaining bodies were in his garage, under the dining room, and in the Des Plaines River. One of the five unidentified victims was buried in his backyard. The remaining four victims were buried in the crawl space. Only 28 of Gacy's victims have been identified so far in the investigations. The five remaining bodies are still currently undergoing further investigation using DNA samples. Police strongly believe that there were more victims than the reported 33 already discovered. There has not been a definitive connection made linking additional murders to Gacy. Gacy was a phenom when it came to manipulating his interrogations. When you say fantasy monster uh, image, uh, what, what are you referring to by that? Well, the idea that that I'm I'm a homosexual thrill killer and all that that garbage, and uh, they painted this image of me that uh, like I, I strolled down the streets and stalked young boys and I slaughtered them. Hell, if you could see my schedule, my work schedule, you know damn well that I was never out there. Raising doubts of whether he was a reliable source when speaking about his crimes, 
To this day, law enforcement believes Gacy was responsible for at least 12 additional unsolved murders. Gacy was sentenced to death row on March 13, 1980. His life ended by lethal injection at Stateville Correctional Center on May 10, 1994. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Kindly subscribe to our channel and click the next video in front of you. See you there.